All right, we're back. We go. We're going to Hebrews, the tenth chapter, and let's look at verse twenty-six first and foremost. Because it's important that we have faith, and having faith, we got to know that. Um, the spirit is going to the most high with groanings. Who was Moshiach Kabbalah? Who was an angel on the right hand side of the most high? To the most high with groanings that can't be uttered. It's so sad that we can't even utter it in these mortal fleshly bodies. So let's go to Hebrews 10 26. It says, For we sin willfully. After that we have received the knowledge of the truth. You sin willfully after you received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. And my sake of shot not going to the most high on your behalf. Understand, understand this, and believe this. That's what he's saying. I'm not, I'm not. Do you know the most high already know the mind? He said, I already know the mind before he, the spirit get there. Knowing that he's bringing something pertaining to you and you ain't worthy for, even, for him to even come before the most high because you sin and willfully you know what's right but you do what's wrong that's what it is you know what's right but you're still gonna do what's wrong or let somebody you know let your feelings take you in the wrong way and he's just quoting from numbers the 15th chapter the 30th verse go there numbers 15 and 30 because I'll tell you, whenever you're looking at the New Testament, if you really want to be in the Spirit, there is no New Testament. It's mainly only they had to go by was the Law and the Prophets. That's it. So what he's quoting from? Numbers 15 and 30. But the soul that doeth ought presumptuously, that's sin and willfully, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproach is, you disgrace is the Most High. Hear that? You know what's right to do, and you do what's wrong. It says you reproaches the Most High, you disgrace the Most High, and that soul shall be cut off from among His people. That's how serious this is. Now you say, "I'm not going to the Most High." I know, I'm not going to the Most High on your behalf. Before it says you're gonna be cut off from among the people. Get rid of you, because He have despised the word of the Most High. It have broken his commandment. That soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall he shall be upon him. Your wickedness shall be upon you. Going back to Hebrews the tenth chapter. That's why it said in verse twenty six. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, say you just grace in the Most High, and you're gonna be cut off. There remain of no more sacrifice for sins. Ain't no more sacrifice for sins. Meaning your sins, you got to deal with it. But a certain fearful, being afraid, being scared, looking for of judgment and fiery indignation. Keep covered with fire to burn a lot of people up. Which shall devour the adversaries because you become the enemy of, enemy of the Most High. Adversary mean enemy. You become the children of the devil. You see? Jump up to verse 31. I say it all the time. For it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. A fearful thing to fall into the most high's hands. But call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions. Because the most high say going to dip you in the fiery furnace of affliction. Prove you. You see? Jump down to verse 35. It says, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. See, don't cast away your confidence. That's why you ain't supposed to let all this heaviness weigh you down. Say, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. You hear that? A lot of reward for you if you don't cast away your confidence, which is your faith in the Most High. And doing what he say do. His rules and regulations. Simple as that. For ye have need of patience. Hear that? 
You have need of patience, which deal with a certain dispensation of time. That, after you have done the will of the Most after you doing what's right in the eyes of the Most High, ye might receive the promise. The promise was given to who? Abraham to Isaac to Jacob to the twelve tribes of Israel. You may receive the promise for yet a little while. And he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Yet a little while, he's going to come. Now the just shall live by faith. You got to live by faith. We define faith in Hebrews 11 and 1. Substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. You draw back to what? Back to what? The world. A worldly way. And doing the things that would displease the Most High. And not keeping his rules and regulations. He said, my soul should not have pleasure in him or her. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. Uh-oh. We're not supposed to be those that draw back unto perdition. But of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Believe it to the saving of your spirit, man. But what does it say? But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. Why he say that? Go, go, go to uh, 2 Thessalonians. Book of 2 Thessalonians. You're going to draw back to perdition. Go to 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. Hey, we're going to read about this perdition and this man that was set up for the day of evil. He told you Proverbs 60 to 4, the most, yeah, the most high created all things for himself. Yeah, even the wicked for the day of evil. And not Job 9, 24 says, the earth was given to the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges there. If not, where and who is he? So now we look at uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3. It said, let no man deceive you. That's what I say. You draw back to petition, right? It said, let no man deceive you by any means. For well, that day shall not come, that great day of the Most High, when he sent him outside side to judge and make war, except there come a falling away first. And we fell in 70 AD. And that man of sin be revealed. The man of sin be revealed. That was made for the day of evil. The Edomites. The son of perdition. So when you draw back, you draw back from an Israelite to be a Gentile-minded person. Son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called the Most High. You know that. You know I got a. You've been out for a while. Here you go. Bam. Opposes and exalts himself above all that is called the Most High. And on my shot, I was shot. Because you know I've showed him over and over again in the Bibles. First page you see it. It says God created the heavens and the earth. And they got the so-called white man there. Who opposes and exalt himself above all that is called the most high. Who done it more than him? I'll wait. Show me Bibles that have other nations in them. That represent the most high. Represent the Mashiach El Shai. Represent the children of Israel. Everybody in the Bibles of them. Primarily. Who opposes and exalt himself above all that is called the most high. Or that is worship. So that he as the Most High sitteth in the temple of the Most High, showing himself that he is the Most High. So he's sitting in the temple of the Most High, showing himself that he is the Most High. You falling back to perdition. You falling right back into the world that you came out of. And, and doing the things that you do that makes you a Gentile. Israelite Gentile? Gentile Israelite? Nah. I don't think so. So he said he opposed all that and exalted himself above all that is called the most high or that is worship 
So that he as the Most High sitteth in the temple of the Most High, showing himself that he is the Most High. You can't deny that. I just showed you. So what, what's the temple of the Most High? 1 Corinthians 3.16 He's sitting in the temple of the Most High, showing himself that he is the Most High. 1 mm -hmm. Corinthians 3.16 Know ye not that ye, you Israelites, you twelve tribes of Israel, are the temple of the Most High? You twelve tribes of Israel? You are the temple of the Most High and that the Spirit of the Most High dwelleth in you? You hear that? Well, that's talking about anybody that called on the name of the Lord. No, let's go to 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. Let's see who he's talking to. Paul called to be an apostle of Amashiach Yahushai through the will of the Most High, who's the power of who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob being the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. And Sothenes, Sothenes, our brother, unto the church of the Most High, which is at Corinth. To them that are sanctified by Shem Amashiach Yahushai, called to be saints. This is who he's talking to. Who the saints? Psalms 148.14 The short version. Who the saints? He also exhorted the horn or the power of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel. Those are the saints, are people near unto him. Praise he the most high. So the book of Corinthians, our people that live in the land of Corinth, are talking to the twelve tribes of Israel. Who are called to be saints. See? So that's who he's talking to. And the man of petition sitting in the temple of the Most High, showing himself to be the Most High, showing himself to be the Mashiach that was shy, showing himself to be the 12 apostles, showing himself to be the Israelites, and everybody else until this day. So if you fall back into a to a petition, that's what he's saying you're doing. Why you can't you can't allow Mourning and sadness to take you off your path to the kingdom. That's why he said, James 4 and 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. You know, you got a lot of people, they marry, but they out there messing around with somebody else. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with the most high? You go back to petition, that's all he knows is the world. That means you at war with the Most High. Enmity means you at war with the Most High. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of the Most High. That means you're the enemy of the Most High. Therefore, you got to look at getting more into this, more, trying to, try, trying to find your way more into the kingdom. Say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You got to find your way more into this. Not less, but more into this. Look, uh... It's very important. It's very, very important. Um, because when you look at the calling that the Most High has called us into, first and foremost, and then something happens. That's why when you go to, there's so many, so many things that's coming to mind as I, I, I the Spirit, you know, is bearing with my spirit. When you look at Ecclesiasticus, the second chapter, it tells you. The verse 1 says, My son, if thou come to serve the Most High, prepare thy soul for temptation. We just read. I'm not saying I'm shy fast for 40 days, 40 nights. Who, who tempted him? The devil, Satan. My son, if thou come to serve the Most High, you come to serve the Most High, prepare thy soul for temptation. The temptation comes and, and, the, and Satan getting in the minds of people. And that will do things that will be conducive to the hurt of you. Because they're the children of the devil. And it sounds good. They, they, I mean, he, he got a great conversation with swelling words and all that. They serve their own belly. For their own purpose. And you're nothing but a guinea pig. The fall for it. My son, if thou serve the Most High, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart, set your mind aright, and constantly endure. Stand as truth, and make not haste in time of trouble. First time trouble come, poof, you out of there. You gone. They don't run in the time of trouble. Cleave unto him. That's when you cleave more to the Most High, in following the things that you have heard. 
and depart not away. That thou mayest be increased at thy last end. So you will depart away. You're going to be decreased at your last end. He's telling you. No matter how you look at it, look at it however you want to, but you're going to be decreased. Because if you cleave to him, and you push them negatives, them demons away, of the world, you're going to be increased at your last end. And no matter how much you increase now, it doesn't compare to the riches of the Most High. Believe this. He said, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, because joy prolongs the life. So sadness and heaviness brings about death. It's still all the same. And it's going to change. It says, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. And be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. Be patient. I tell you with time. Don't run. Where are you going to run to? Where are you going to run that you're not going to be in a, dealing with the sky? The sky, when you run, you go somewhere, you're going to deal with the most sky. He's everywhere. <laughs> He's everywhere. So where are you going to run from him? To hide from him? And he see you. Once you call, it's too late. You can play with this as you want to. But he already, he already said he's going to visit us. He's already killing us. I mean, it's sad. I have to give condolences, condolences, condolences. And say condolences over and over and over and over again almost every day. You have to feel that. And that's, it's, it's bad, man. He said, for gold is tried in the fire. And acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. You hear that? Acceptable men are going to be put in the furnace of adversity. Different changes. But if you weak and you give up, here you are right here. Second Peter's second chapter, the 20th verse. Well, after that, you have been escaped the pollutions of the world. Well, after you have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of our master and savior of Mashiach Yahushai, they are again entangled therein. You go back out to the the, the man of perdition, what he have set up for you to go to hell with him? You go back out there and deal in this world the things they have offered to you to be just like everybody that say they're a Gentile, you call yourself an Israelite, or whatever tribe you call yourself of, and you go back out in the world dealing with the worldly people and the worldly things that they're dealing with, it don't matter who it is. For if after they have escaped pollutions of the world, pollution is nasty, filthy nastiness of the world, through the knowledge of our master and savior, of Mashiach Yabashai, they are again entangled therein. You go back out there, dealing in the world, and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Believe this, people. That's why you got to follow what he say. He's giving you guidelines to go by. You follow him, it works. If you don't follow him, it's going to work. Or you read it the way it is, and you read it the way it is, backwards. And you will see the results of what the scripture is saying. He's saying the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. But if you continue in this, and rebuke all them, dip, them spirits that come to try and have you mourning and sorrowful and continue to be in heaviness that's going to bring forth death because you're killing yourself, which is suicide. And you know that there's, there's no uh, uh, everlasting life for someone that killed themselves. you causing it yourself. You know better. It says, for if it had been better... For them not to have known the way of righteousness. That's like when we say you making the most high a reproach. It's been better for you not to have known the way of keeping this law, statute, commandments, being an Israelite. Repenting and coming back to his rules and regulations. He's saying. Then after they have known it, after you know what's right, you've been taught his moral life, moral laws, civil laws, dietary laws, ceremonial laws. 
You've been going to uh, holy convocations. You know what this is all about. You know about the Sabbath. You know about living righteously in your life. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. You hear this? But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. And it's really important because this is what happens to a lot of people. When certain things happen, they go back to the world. Certain things happen, they don't remain in the truth. They don't remain trying to be an Israelite. They go back in the world. And the only thing they have to go back to is what? Religions. If they're going to deal with that or just be buck wild. This is what it says. But it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog, that's cold, call you a dog. The dog is turned to his own vomit. Again. All the filthy madness that came out of you, those spirits that came out of you, the dog has gone back to his own vomit because the dog will vomit and eat it right back, back up. And the soul, the nasty, filthy, nasty, I might say, hog, pig, that was washed, washed you clean because he told you in St. John 15 and 3, now you are clean through the words that I speak unto you. And this, now he calls it a nasty pig that was washed, cleaned up by the word, to her waddling in the mud, waddling in your own feces, eating out your own feces. That's what a pig does. That's how he compare you. That's terrible. But it's real, y'all. And it's something that. We have to look at as a people and not going back to because it could be very detrimental to you. You got to hear this. You got to really hear this and not fall prey to the wiles of the devil. Don't let them get you. That's his whole objective. Where are you going to be when he come for you? What you going to do? Because he coming. He coming to judge and make war. He going he gonna, to um, make examples of people. Because he tell you he going to purge out the rebels. What you think? Everybody that make on the ship not going to be saved. You going to have to make it. Into the kingdom. That's why he's giving you clear ways that we can make it. We can do this. We don't have to be caught up in uh, following the way of the world and being the enemy of the Most High. And next thing you know, we in elect fire. Why it says, um, go to uh, oh, wait a minute. Um, go to Matthew the twelfth chapter and verse forty-three. See, when the Most High call you into this, it's the highest calling you can be called into, and then He start to show you the understanding of His Word. The little that he allow us to know of him. And then we go backwards unto the man of perdition. This world that's set up to go, you know, and to bring as many as they can with them to hell. And that hell is that hell fire that's going to burn with a fire that's never quenched. And the worms. Is eating you up and never die. They don't get enough fear of the Most High when He says that's what He's going to do to people. He's going to be welling and gnashing of teeth. 
If they don't scare you enough, then hey, more power to you. But once, like I said, you nothing but like, if you go back into the world, you just like a dog eating up his vomit. And he went either further, so you like a nasty pig waddling in the slop, his own feces eating out of your own crap. Now, once that happened, and you know someone that's in the truth, the next thing you know, when you keep on slipping them, I say, oh, shot ain't going to the world, to the most high for you, point blank. So you're on your own. Now, when you look at Matthew 12 and 43, this is what he's telling you. It says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. So you got, we all have unclean spirits. We have all, all of us have unclean spirits. When we come in the truth, we say that now you are clean through the word which I speak unto thee. The word cleans us up. The word cleans us up. So it says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places. So he's out of, he's walking through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. So he can't find no rest. Can't find no rest, right? Then he says, this unclean spirit say to himself. I will return into my house. I will return to my body from whence I came out. How many people you know? I know a lot of people. They were learning this truth. Like we said, it's an old saying, it's a revolving door. And now they out there. They ain't dealing with this. But they, some of them still think they rolling with the most high on my shot, that was shot. He said, then he said, I will return into my house from which I came out. And when he has come, he findeth it empty. Because they ain't studying no more. They're not going to what's necessary to make it to the kingdom. He findeth it empty, that body empty and swept and garnished. Ain't nothing there. Ain't nothing there. I read the Bible, but they're not dealing with precepts to get understanding no more. He found it as empty, swept, and gone. Because what they have? Nothing but the son of petition. They done went backwards. Like you say, backsliding? Yeah, they done backslide all the way into the world. They ended up with somebody other world. And they ain't trying to deal with, don't say the most size word. They dealing with the way they feel. Satisfaction, feelings, and so forth. Or money. The way of this world, what the world says, this makes you somebody. Then he said, I will return to my house from whence I came out. And when he come, when he has come, he find it empty, swept, and garnished. The truth ain't in him no more. Didn't go of heat. This unclean spirit that came out of you. When you came in the truth, start cleaning you up through the word. But now, you went back to the backwards to petition. To this type of world that we in right now, then go up he and take it with himself. Seven, that's a complete number. Seven is the number of completion. A complete number of other spirits more wicked than himself. That's why he's going to do things like the world. You say, why are they doing that? Because they are the world. They're at war with the Most High. They're the enemy of the Most High. But it's hard for people to see this because of the fact that they, they're, uh, we the meek. So we don't see what we should see. What the most high telling us. You hearing what he's saying. But listen, then go of he, that unclean spirit, and take it with himself. Seven, a complete number of other spirits more wicked than himself. Hear that? He get a complete number of spirits, no matter how many it was. Remember, Legion was 2,000. More wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. This is very serious. They enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. You know? It's been better for you not to have known the truth than know it and allow yourself to allow these Satan's imps to get into your mind and have you fall short of the kingdom of the Most High. The last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. He letting you know. 
It's a wicked generation that we in now. You have heard. It is what it is. We letting you know. Straight up. Just no matter where you're going to be at. Where you're going to be at. And changing. So that. It don't. Uh, come to you. And you fall short. Because you always say, oh, faithless generation. Hmm. That's why for you to know and really trying to operate in this truth, look what he said in Luke 10. And we'll start at verse 23. He said, and he turned him, and he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, to his disciples said, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. You know? Blessed are the eyes that see the things that we see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them until this day. And to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. They have not heard these things. And even though they do listen, it sounds like wah, 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 wah. what is he talking about? I don't understand what he's saying. Because he tell you wisdom Solomon 5 and 7, as for the way the most high and the most high, when well, salvation come on this earth, they're going to say, we have not known it. I don't care how much you bring forth this truth. I don't care how much you sit there and teach these ones that are two-thirds of our people and the other nations. They're not going to see it. Because the most I don't want them converted. And their sins forgiven them. He said let the monster perish then. Which was born in vain. Let my grape. A grape of a whole cluster of grapes. And my plant be kept. For with great labor have I made it perfect. He's working. To make us perfect. And here we are. Looking at this as if. Uh. We can do some ourselves. Or some people need to be exalted. He that exalted himself shall be a base. He that humble himself shall be exalted. So it's very important that we, you know, take the time to um not allow ourselves to be overwhelmed, you know, after dispensation of time, you know, we got to start really looking at trying to get back on track with our lives, because when you understand, this is serious, people, this is very serious, so look, uh, look at, um, uh, Matthew, it's like I got a bit another Bible. Matthew 22, not Matthew the 22nd chapter. And verse um, 32. It say, I am the power of Abraham, it's the most high, and the power of Isaac, and the power of Jacob. The most high is not the power of the dead. You hear that? So, the most high is not the power of the dead. Because after you die, it's a judgment. But of the living. You see this? So, it doesn't make any sense to, um, you can't pray for the dead. Because... They're already gone. They're already dealing with the judgment and they're dealing with their habitation of wherever they are once they die after the judgment. So he said he's not the power of the dead, but of the living. And we are the living. So we got to take more time in dealing with us, we that are alive. You see, it's very important because he's the power of the living. 
Hallelujah. That we have the opportunity to be able to enjoy our plight with the Most High. While we have breath in our bodies to get it right. You know, every day is a blessing that he's given us to get ourselves together. Look at uh, uh look at Acts the seventh chapter and verse uh which with thirty. And when 40 years were expired, that the Moses had left, that he had killed the Egyptian, that was harming his brother, the Israelite, and he went to uh, the land of Midian, and it says, And when 40 years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Most High in a flame of fire in a bush. That fire is dealing with the word of the Most High. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight, and as he drew near to hold it, the voice of the Most High came unto him, which is the word of the Most High, which is the Mashiach Yavashai, saying, I am the power of thy fathers, the power of Abraham, and the power of Isaac. Because the Most High always have an, uh, he always had an angel speaking with us. He said, I am the power of Abraham, and the power of Isaac, and the power of Jacob. Then Moses trembled, and durst not behold. Then said the Most High through the angel to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. See, I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning, hear that? We groaning, mourning, crying out to the Most High, and have come down to deliver them. So we got to cry for the last time, and he's going to hear our groaning. And he's going to come down to deliver us. He's going to send a Mashiach Yavashai, as we read in Revelation 19 and 11, to come and judge and make war and set righteousness up on this earth. And now come, I will send thee into Egypt. This Moses whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a, and a judge? Like, they, like a Mashiach Yavashai is that stumbling stone. He a stumbling stone to those that don't want to believe in him. As he's going to come and judge and make war. And send fire on this earth to purify it. And the fire is the word, and the fire is actual fire. It's gonna be burning people up. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did the Most High send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel, which appeared to him in the bush. Hear that? By the hand of the angel, who was a Mashiach that was shot as the angel of the Most High? The I am. As he said in St. John, they asked him in St. John 8, 53, who you think you are? He told him in verse 58, say, before Abraham was, I am. Take it or leave it. And they took stones and stone him. He brought them out after he had sworn wonders. He had, excuse me, had shown wonders and signs in the land of Egypt. Like he's going to bring forth wonders and signs in this land, especially here in America and in the Red Sea. And in the wilderness forty years. This is that Moses was said unto the children of Israel, a prophet, shall the most high your power raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear. That's the Mashiach Yabashai. The same thing that was told to um the um the um the disciples. And uh when the Mashiach was shy, took them up into a mountain. Go to Matthew, the seventh chapter, 17th chapter. And he took Peter and John and James up into a high mountain. Verse 5, it says, While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud, which is a chariot of the Most High, what they call a UFO. We call them IFO, identified flying objects. You call them unidentified flying objects. We call them identified flying objects. A bright cloud overshadowed them that you know if it was a bright cloud, it was in the daytime. 
And behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Right? And, is, and when his disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were so afraid. <laughs> right? So, going back to Acts 7th chapter, it tells you, um, verse 35, this Moses whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler or a judge and a judge? The same did the most I sin to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. My second shot asked the angel. He brought them out after he had said, had shown wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness forty years. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the most high your power raise up unto you of your brethren, as of your people, your nation, like unto me. Him shall ye hear. And I'll tell you in Hebrews 7, 14, for this evidence that our power, my second was shine, sprang out of Judah. Judah was J Jacob's our forefather, whose name was changed to Israel, fourth born son. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received a lot of the oracles to give unto us. You see? That's why when you look at John 1 45, um, St. John, the first chapter, the 45th verse, it says, Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law. And the prophets did write, Mashiach Yavashai of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. See? So he knew who he was. Who Moses wrote. Say, him shall ye hear. So he's given us directions of what we should do. Now, um, oh, let me, uh, let me go to here and we'll continue this another time. We'll go to, uh, St. John 14 and 27. Amashiach Yavashai told him, he said, peace. This is what we all need, peace. He said, I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. It's a special peace. He said, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. See, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. He said, let not your heart, your mind be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. So don't let it be afraid. And don't let your mind be troubled. Because heaviness bringeth forth death. See? He said, once again, he said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart or your mind be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Because the most I don't give us a spirit of fear. He say, fear him. Just fear him. That's it. He don't give us a spirit of fear. So, it's very important that um, we see this. And uh, I have so much more I can go on, but I'm going to stop for time's sake. And if you have any questions or comments, just let me know. Shalom, I'm out.